after such a powerfully shifting week and weekend that we just went through, I just wanted to close the night out to talk about <clears throat> peace, healing, conveying the energy of healing, visualization, sound, scent, frequency, ways of improving your aura. How are you, Jamie? How you doing? Mama Nature, how you doing, sweet one? We had just talked about the frankincense and myrrh and the smelling of, you know, what I always smell like. <laughs> because I always, always have frankincense and myrrh on me somewhere. Oils or incense. The sage, the sweet smelling flavor, the way that you can smell something and it triggers a memory in your subconscious. <clears throat> yeah. No, no phony interruption on the broadcast tonight. This is all just a one on one direct conversation. How do you control your happiness? How do you control your joy? Can something outside of your body stimulate your joy? Can something outside of your body stimulate your anger? Is there anything outside of your body that's not there? Are you in control? Are you driving? Are you reacting? Is your empathy and your ability to react, feel, remotely, is it being manipulated? Well, you know, look at the device as it is. You have a cellular device, and the most sophisticated cellular device that you have is your body. It's interconnected by life force, glued together by gluons, energons, vibrating in such a quantum state that you think you're solid when in fact you're just different particles of light, just like the plant and everything else that depend on light for photosynthesis. So the biggest trick that you have is thinking that you are not an extension of the plant, animal life, the horticulture, the ecosystem, and the universe that you're in. Today, you know, I had a conversation briefly, and it was over someone who was rapping, communicating, chanting, griot, tapping in. A beautiful sistar goddess, Netra, Netru, a living manifestation of nature that was able to use her sound mind, intellect, will, coupled with her heart's desire to communicate and to convey her feelings, her emotions, about the rap game and, you know, the people who get the contracts to become role models or examples of what you would call an entity that is celebrated. A cell that found a way to tap into its creative muse and found an audience that attracted energetically to the vocal or the invocations, the word sound power that you're speaking in a way of commercializing or a delivery mechanism to create mass effect or mass appeal. Greetings divinity, how are you beloved? And yes, it's on my bucket list to actually go camping, go fishing, and uh, go home back to Jamaica and see my mama and my grandma. And those are the last three things on my bucket list that I've ever wanted to do. We started a conversation, but we just kind of like, you know, everything else swirl around. I didn't finish, but that's my answer to that. So you want to go camping? By all means, let's do it. 
you know. <coughs> I I don't snore, but I do talk a lot. And I do a lot of poetry and I sing. I'm prone to just burst out singing at any given occasion. So if you're cool with that, hey. And I'm always tapping on something. I just got to have drum beats or as they would say, you got ADHD. And I go, no, I have attention tuned to higher dimensions. And I hear all sounds at once. It's a beautiful orchestra or an opera that I'm a part of that even the insect speaks to and through me. Yeah. Um, welcome here. Mama Trina, how are you, beloved? Um, Anata, thank you. Mama Nature, thank you for tuning in. Love, truth, light, justice to you. Because let's face it, truth is love. Love is fidelity. The fidelity or the integrity of that which makes you whole. Without love, you would not be. Love is such an integral part in the inception, conception, reproduction, co-creation, recreation, all of that. Pro or con. It doesn't matter the polarity of it. Love and seeding and eggs and ovaries and pistils and stamens. It doesn't matter. All of this is just poles, functions, modalities of transferring life. So what if you are a stem? Without a stem cell with the seed code of divine creation in it, organs would not know how to form from a semen. Feel me? Hello, you doing, Mama Ellie? How you? Welcome, welcome. So I want to talk to you about how are you directing your energies? How are you learning from everything around you that's teaching? That screaming, shouting loudly, pay attention to me. You hear the thunder clap? Do you hear the raindrops? Do you think the thunder clap didn't give its best at that moment in time when it was uttered? Do you think the raindrops, when it falls from the sky, it's crying because it's coming to the earth and it knows it's going to die, it's not going to be a raindrop anymore? Being a raindrop was only temporary. It was just one of the stages of the evolutionary process of the water cycle. You being right now who you are in this biological unit, you are everything and nothing. You are the sum of all things epitomized in your ancestral collection or collective or the bag of cells that walks around with a name tag that says, hey, I'm Ian or hey, you're Trina or hey, you're Haley. But even in that individuated essence of creation, that is us, that is you, that is me, or that is one cell in your body, <coughs> that unity or that unit doesn't have any lower or higher significance than it's just a part of the whole complex makeup. Just like the earth. She doesn't know that we're, we think we're separate. She knows that as far as we're concerned, we are the little things that live on the surface of her head and sometimes we scratch, sometimes we itch, sometimes we burn things down because guess what? Sometimes we're acting like children that don't know no better. We play with fire and act like it's not supposed to burn. Sometimes we look at the baby carriage that holds us and we resent the carriage because it confines us but without the carriage we would not exist. I'll say it another way. Brothers, you might resent the womb that you were born out of and you might love to go back inside of the one that you're calling your boo right now. But a womb is a womb. It's a cradle where life is being supported, nurtured, and it must bear fruit. It must be fertilized. It must be cultured. It must be cultivated. It must be used and appreciated appreciated for what it is how many of us have separated the parts of our beloved from the whole oh yeah man I like her she got nice boobs she got nice this she got nice that but you're not seeing that it's a soul inside of that body reflecting you so you would find attractiveness or you would find the stimulus 
to be aroused, to be ions stimulated to participate in the dance of creation. One of the things I can say I love about myself is I love my uniqueness. I love the way I think. I love my perspectives. I love the fact that I don't limit my thought forms from thinking the all or thinking the none or thinking the micro or thinking the macro and everything else in between. I look forward to dancing with many of you because the questions you ask inspires me to dig down a little bit and access a little bit more. That's why when I taught classrooms, I, I would go, you know, everybody, every day you come here and you show up to be a part of this, you have your A. You got your A when you walked out of the bed. You had your A when you walked through the door. All you could do right now is just show up, dance, and keep it. Yeah, you might say something that might be a little off color from time to time. Guess what? Manure is fertilizer you put it in its proper perspective or proper place, it actually has the bacterial agents that support lives and life forms and the growth of new things. Everything about our physical carbon-based life form is a recyclable system that is always in codependent relationships on another. Take, for example, this conversation we're having right now. Do you think it was not already predetermined that we would be the ones gathered right here, right now. Of all the places and all the things that we could have been doing, you know that we are the embers and the sparks of creation that's dancing, as above, so below. And we had to find ways to interact and extrapolate and engage it here. At this density, Never have smoke without fire, unless it's the friction that begins the fire, right? And what's stopping the soul inside of your flashlight? Let's say your whole unit right now, the three parts of your body. Your, 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 your body mind or the man of your body, the man of your soul or the demand of your soul, the demand of your spirit, the urge, the yearning, the desire. Your soul right now has a sacred desire, which is love. It wants to express itself. It wants to come out. How will it find its way to align its power with its expression in the unit which is your body that it's in? How do you understand the body played its role, the soul has to play its role, and also the mind must be subject to the heart because it's in the heart where you desire this anyway. It's not just from your mind or your mind or the, 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 the questions in your head that you think are not statements. Don't you know that it is your soul that says right now, I want to be free. I want, I desire, I want to know. And I want this human to know that it's not that experience only, that the soul is the reflection of many experiences in and out of form. Before you and your father mother met as parents and child did the energy that you identify with as your conscious awareness did it not already exist did it not choose to be a part of this experience without the body were you not there All right, someone shared today a beautiful piece of AI architectural information. And the archetype that I want you to remember, even with artificial intelligence, human biological intelligence, human it, human intelligence, is 
one of the most symmetrically beautiful designed automaton or automation in all of creation you're a living biological cells that has no wire need no external power source other than the soul that was fused in with the cell of your creation in this form to keep it moving day to day you will have to reconnect and synchronize your power source with the internal and the external so when we say get up in the morning and be present look to where the sun rise because you're part of the sun being present hey Lene how are you sweet one I was little junior ions in the belly because we're talking about existence in the womb and your perfect example as a womb carrying cradling life in you your unborn child has steered and guided your symbiosis to align with the things that it wants to experience even before coming into physicality so yes you've existed a long time and yes your soul wants to express itself yes it's telling you that the seven key portals in your body needs to be in alignment but you have more than just those seven energetic centers in your body that will be responding to the transformation that your soul empowers in your body does these conversations help to enlighten what are you receiving from this exchange is this exchange mutually beneficial isn't it triggering and reminding the sinews and the synapses of your thought process and how you communicate to look at the words look at the letters come you and I cut ions are interrelating right there because we came out of that cat the holy yoni we have to respect the role that gender plays in the conveyance and the delivery system of what is the pytron or the the apparatus for creating vessels that souls will embody here and that thing that triggers this desire is all based on love and there are tears to love you know there's the love that you know yo man I love that seat I love that cheer I love that flower I love that plant you know there is the I love you there's never a day that goes by that I don't look forward to the things that you have to share I love you you inspire me to be the best version of myself that I can be I love you because you walk a walk that's so uniquely yours and you beat to your own drum no matter what is going on outside I love you for staying true to what you symbolically represent as your whole beings unity I love you for being your divine expression here and now and owning it walking in it and being it I love you for what without any expectations of you doing anything I love you for the choice you've made freely and willingly to be here now listening to this I love you for being a part of the promise that your ancestors held dear that one day the time would come when all would see and hear I love you on the microscopic level because on the microscopic level is where we all look the same a bunch of zeros forming cells with cell tissue cell membrane mitochondria uh, nucleotide nucleus in the center you see us that's where the codes lay in us see lay code in all the DNA I love you for being the DNA I love you for all of the forms and shapes that you express I love you because you are the gift that God gave to you I love you because I am a reminder and without you who would I have reminded I love the interdependency that we have we're co-dependent systems interrelating with each other in service to each other because we are like nesting bowls or nesting dolls from the smallest to the largest we coexist in each other I love you 
I love you, is what the baby says, even when it can't pronounce the words properly. I love you. It's what your dog says. Oh. It's what your cat says. Yow. It's it's just the emotion that is shown that's proven evident in its expression because you can't fake it. I love you because when you're in contact, you make my goosebumps. You know what I mean? I just wanna bump it against you. Doing the bump, oh bump. You know, I love the dance that we do. And most importantly, I love you all as you are. Because when I thought I was the only person on the planet that existed like I did in 2012, and I realized that I was not crazy, that in fact this was something that were occurring from the inside of me out of grief or desire to see and know the truth once and for all evidenced in my being, I love you because I had to walk away from everything just so that I could find y'all on the journey and experience those that I've met in person and those that I've met digitally, spiritually, telepathically, empathically.